everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Friday, December 22nd, 2023, three days until Christmas. Our guest today is Gary Barnett, a longtime friend and colleague of mine. Gary is a retired financial planner and right now specializes in dissecting and analyzing government. He is one of the fiercest opponents, opponents of government that I know because he sees right through it. Gary, it's a pleasure to have you on here. You and I have known each other for a long time. You're on my show uh, when I had it at Fox. Um, you you still write for LouRockwell.com. I wrote for Lou for about 10 years, and I still read your pieces regularly. How dangerous is the federal government in the United States of America today? Uh, well, I mean, uh, it's ultimately the the uh, most dangerous thing uh, possible. Um, I mean, I think that of all governments, uh, but this government in particular um, uh, has been so powerful over the ages and in, actually in a short period of time. And uh, at this point, uh, it's, you know, it's just become a, a war nation uh, and the, the, the power structure uh, is so huge and so uh, globally positioned and, and controlling uh, that it, you know, it's become dangerous for everyone. Does the Constitution work no. as an instrument to restrain the government? Maybe you should be asking me that because I'm the constitutional guy, but you're you're the the person who has spent so much time analyzing government. And short answer uh, is no, uh, of course. And what can be done to make it work? Um. Well, actually, I, actually, I don't. I don't think anything can be done to make it work. And uh, you know, I mean, you know, when you get into constitutional questions, um, it's uh, it gets sticky and people get touchy about it. Uh, but you know, if you go back to uh, Lysander Spooner, uh, paraphrasing a, a little bit, but I think, I think, I think he said, no matter what it is or isn't, uh, the one thing that's certain is that it never has worked and therefore it's not worth having. So um, I don't think uh, the problem with the constitution in my mind, and I know we probably have, uh, we could argue this forever. We're going to disagree with some things, but uh, the problem for me is you've got a government putting forth a document uh, that they're supposed to uh, adhere to on their own and they control whether they do or not, and they control uh, any scrutiny there. So it's just, to me, it's just a government document allowing power. So, and of course, you know, um, uh, a lot of people say they're anti-government. I am very much anti-government. That's why I consider myself a very strict anarchist. You also uh, consider yourself uh, to be uh, a, a believer in the natural law, that our rights come from our humanity, which, of course, is articulated in the, uh, in the Ninth Amendment to the Constitution, but nobody, nobody follows that. Every president that has taken an oath to uphold it has just disregarded all that. And by the way, there is no difference between us on the, on the Constitution. I agree with you. Formally, it exists. We have a president, we have a judiciary, we have a, a Congress, but functionally it, it doesn't control anything. They do whatever they want. They are the evaluators of their own uh, their own behavior. Madison and Jefferson uh, believed uh, that the states could secede peacefully, and that, of course, would knock the federal government down to size. The people in those states wouldn't have to pay any federal taxes, and the feds would have to get the hell out of those uh, states. Well, we know what happened when that was tried uh, in uh, in 1860. I don't think it's going to be tried again. But to me, it seems that if a if a state voluntarily entered the union by a voluntary act of legislation, it can voluntarily rescind that piece of legislation if it wants. Uh, our mo modern day articulator of that is our friend. Tom Woods, but this is not me. This is Madison who wrote the Constitution, and this is Jefferson who wrote the Declaration of Independence. And yet, when you and I uh, say this in public, people look at us like we have two heads. What would Chuck Schumer do 
if all those billionaires in Texas didn't have to pay federal taxes? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, we at one point, you know, when we're under, uh, excuse me, under our first constitution, Articles of Confederation, uh, the federal government didn't have any power. They had no power to tax. Uh, they didn't control commerce. They didn't, uh, you know, control much of anything. Um, you know, with the Constitution uh, drafting, um, that changed so dramatically, and it took a long time. But the thing about government, uh, all government is going to seek more power, and if they're able to, to, uh, to, to do so, uh, you know, you, you'll end up with a, you know, very dictatorial oligarchy or, uh, or a full-blown dictatorship or martial law or whatever at some point in time. Um, if the people don't, uh, you know, tear it down. I mean, when you were talking about secession, and for me, um, I get asked all the time, what's your solution? How are you going to fix things? And, of course, no one can fix anything for anyone. They have to do it on their own, each individual. Uh, but but the uh, just in general, philosophically speaking, if you're going to talk about secession, um, secession is the way out. I mean, I think... I think it should be on a mass scale. I think every state should secede, and then every part of every state should secede. Right. I'm right. Secession. Now we're talking about the principle of subsidiarity, a, a phrase coined by uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, um, that that government is, uh, is, is best, which is closest to the people, but you can secede from it. So the state of Texas can secede from the federal government, and Harris County can secede from Texas, and Houston can secede from uh, Harris County because the, the 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 linchpin, I think you agree with this, to the legitimacy of government is the consent of the governed. And if the governed no longer consent to the government, then the government is no longer morally valid and it has no longer has moral authority over the people. Now, that's pure natural law theory, which I argue is embraced by the Ninth Amendment, and I suspect you you agree with me. We all can leave the government. We all can ignore the government when it bullies us around rather than serves us. Well, it's true, um, but, you know, the people have to do it. And, and the thing is, is um, uh, if government is is unnecessary i mean which in my opinion uh it's completely immoral um and people can uh, could secede or would secede and they didn't need government there would be no use for government at all period that you know that's that's where anarchy comes in but a lot of people um want government and i i would not argue with them i think they should have it so long as it's not forced on it anyone that doesn't want it. And that's where the, you know, a partial secession could be very useful. Uh, but to, uh, to go that route, you know, for uh, one state or a few states or part, part of some states were to secede, as long as the federal government is still in place, um, there's going to be violence and there's, and there's going to be uh, attempts to disallow that and so it, it's going to take a, a pretty big force uh you know pretty big uh, secession uh, uh, widespread i think uh you know in order to gain enough power to over you know to overrule the government so and you and i have a dispute and we hire somebody to resolve the dispute and pretty soon that person uh hires others and they start taking money from us against our will in order to resolve the dispute and in order to protect us from others. And we can't get out from under them. I mean, that's the government today. If the purpose of government is to defend our liberty, not take our assets, and we can't control it, no matter who is in the White House, Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, James Madison, no matter who is in the White House, the government is still going to take our assets uh, away from us and still tell us uh, what to do. Well, that's that's an overlord that we just can't get rid of. <laughs> well, that's the thing about government. If you have government, you're going to have 
force. That's all government is. And they have a takings force. So if they can, if they can take your property, they can eventually control you entirely. And that's what's going on now. Uh, one thing we were talking about uh, before we went on, um, uh, you know, it's the, uh, the big picture of all this um, is, is missed a lot because if you notice, I've been writing about this uh, oh, uh, quite a few times in the uh, in recent months, um, but there's there's a new uh, terror event or a new event by government or a new takings or war or uh, what have you, and it's a, on a constant basis now. Whether it's uh, you know these uh, you know fires in Lahaina or if it's uh, uh, the uh, uh, Zionist Israeli uh, takeover of Gaza or it's uh, uh, chemical spills or it's whatever. I mean, there's a million things and they're just coming back to back to back and, and the news concentrates on them until they can push to the next event that's being done. And then they just put it on the back burner and, and make it disappear. So the big picture gets overlooked, but the big picture to me um, is, uh, is that, well, first off, the government doesn't, isn't in control. There is a controlling element uh, above government. Some people call it the deep state. I, 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 I try to uh, define it a little differently, but it's it is the government is control. They are not the top tier of power. They are down the line. So as long, but if the, uh, I think I think an important uh, fact about this is if the government disappears or loses power. The people controlling government are going to lose power because they use government right. in order to control the people. Do you remember uh, that uh, f- famous uh, one-liner yeah. by um, Murray Rothbard? <laughs> uh, you're, well, there are a lot of them. Uh, yeah. You're sitting at home one night and uh, in your house, and there's a knock on the door. You open the door, and there's a guy with a gun. And he says, give me your money. I want to give it away in your name. And you say, what, are you crazy? I'm going to call the police. He says, don't bother. We are the police. (laughs) That's basically what government uh, does. Uh, Government is is force. It's it's force. It has a monopoly of power in a geographic area. There's no moral propriety to government. It's just whoever controls the levers of power, whether it's this little small farming town that I live in, in Northwest New Jersey, whether it's the open plains where you live, whether it's New York City, it's who, there's no morality to it. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever the people who control it uh, want to do. Why do governments kill? Why did everybody from uh, Donald Trump to Barack Obama to George W. Bush to Joe Biden kill people? Well, I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that because all governments kill people. And the United States government, I think, what, 93, 94, and this is what it said, I think it's higher, but 93% of the, of the entire existence of the U.S. has been aggressive war, not defensive war at any stage other than the South secession. So, you, you know, you've got a, you've got a situation where, uh, you know, killing people pays off, you know, war pays off. The people get, the people controlling get very, very wealthy. And the people that are considered the cannon fodder who die for the government, they call it their country, but they're dying for government. And they use them uh, in order to gain more power, a more geopolitical control, uh, more wealth. And if you look right now, uh, basically all the wealth on earth is held <laughs> in a very, very small, tight uh, group of people. And it's going to, going to get worse. And, but, but they're not going to stop killing. And on top of that, at this point in time in our history, uh, you've got a great uh, desire uh, by the people that, and I call them very evil that are running things and the people that are uh are uh, helping them along like government, uh, they have great incentive to depopulate and they're wanting to depopulate this earth. Uh, so they have more control. So, because we're, we're going to go to a global rule. If people don't wake up 
a lot more. We're going to be in a global rule situation very quickly. So one of the ways that uh, government grows is by bribery. I mean, government bribes the rich with the bailouts. Well, it bribes the states uh, with cash by paying their bills in return for strings attached. That bribes the rich with bailouts. Your bank is going to fail. Don't worry. We'll print some cash so you don't lose any money. Uh, it bribes the middle class with tax cuts. Uh, and it bribes the poor uh, with welfare payments. So uh, almost everybody across the board is addicted to government in one way or another. What you're criticizing now is something that I've criticized, and, and the people watching us now, I can tell from the comments they're making, fully agree with you, and I knew they would, uh, <laughs> is you're, you're being critical of the military-industrial complex. I mean, just look at all the people that were enriched by the war in Ukraine. The government doesn't want us to look at the 500,000 young Ukrainian men, a generation of young men, that will never return to a productive economy because two thirds of them are dead and one third are so injured that they can't, uh, that they can't return. And that enriched the military industrial complex and strengthened the military part of the military industrial complex here in the United States. Was it done by legislation? No, it was done by the will of, uh, of one man, Joe Biden. He inherited a mess, but he made it worse. Well, the, uh, you know, I, I put forward that it, every single election it's worse than the one before. And I think yes. that will always be so. <laughs> I have a little different attitude about that. But, uh, but you know, the, the military is just the, uh, and, you know, <laughs> they're just the murdering arm of the government. And, and you know, there's good people everywhere and there's good people in the military and there's good people elsewhere. But the whole aspect of it uh, and the whole concept of it is... Uh, they they actually do the force that they're told to do. They act on orders, and it doesn't matter what those orders are. And so, uh, you know, a real military that was there to defend us, uh, if we were attacked, which we, we haven't been, but if we were attacked and defend us, would take care of that and then pull back and be done with it. They wouldn't There wouldn't be uh, global wars and uh, wars that lasted uh, forever. Um, and you know, there shouldn't be any war in my estimation. I, I, I abhor it, but the, uh, but we don't have a system, uh, you know, where, uh, you've got any morality at all. Uh, government is immoral at its base. It's impossible to have a government that isn't immoral because the entirety of it is based on force and theft and you cannot, the, there's nothing moral about that. So correct, you know, correct. You know, that's what it boils down to was was December seventh, nineteen forty one, a false flag. Was nine eleven a false flag? Was October seventh in Israel a false flag? Uh, in my estimation, all were false flags, uh, without any doubt. In my estimation, I mean, you can argue certain parts about it, but. Uh, you know, I mean, if you study history, you look at, at Pearl Harbor, what was going on there. Uh, that was pretty obvious. 9-11 uh, is even almost more obvious to me. And so was October 7th, uh, you know, in Gaza. Uh, you, you, things just don't happen uh, that way. I mean, a lot of people who are commenting about these things, you know, they want to they want to be very careful and stay on the side. I figure I have to be the guy that uh, just states it right out. Say I'll, I'll put whatever I have to put out to show that you know what what it is, but some things you just can't discount. You know, uh, you know when it's so obvious that everything is completely askew and it's set up, uh, you have to you have to call them out. Well, it is well known by many historians today that FDR and his people knew well in advance the Japanese were coming and, in fact, manipulated them into uh, doing so. It is well known today that the Israeli Mossad was across the river in Jersey City taking pictures and celebrating as the planes uh, were attacking uh, the World Trade Center. And it is well known, even the New York Times acknowledges this, that the Netanyahu government had uh, attack plans for a year and actually saw this stuff coming, but was asleep at the switch because Netanyahu needed 
uh, a war in order to unify people around them and in order to stay out of jail. Well, Netanyahu is in, you know, in big trouble. I mean, you know, the, uh, Zionism is not Judaism, first off. So when you've got a, a ruling structure based on Zionism, which is colonialism uh, at any cost, you know, it's a whole different ball game. But when you're looking at uh, these events that happened, uh, they're virtually, they're impossible. Uh, it's impossible. So, and, and when you say you it's at, impossible, you mean it's impossible for them to have been spontaneous and impossible for them to have happened without the, the so-called victims knowing about it. Well, uh, of, of course. I mean, it was a setup. If you, if you, uh, uh, I mean, Hamas, you know, the way they got in power uh, in Palestine was because uh, Mossad and the Zionist government, along with the U.S. and the CIA, put them there. And you know the heads of the heads of Hamas are not living in Gaza getting bombed. I can guarantee you that. Uh, you know, there. It, this is this is a long term. I mean, if you go back and study this for just seventy five years, I've gone back and looked at the history of this for, uh, oh, you know, long, long before that. And uh, and this particular event that just happened. Uh, I mean, to me, it looks like uh, I know it was structured, you know, long in advance, but uh, I, I guess people uh, are not able anymore to, you know, discern the obvious because uh, Israel with their military and their might and their surveillance and a, a, a total population locked behind walls under, uh, you know, where a mouse could move without them knowing it. All of that doesn't change in one night, and then everything, you know, uh, go the way it did. So you have to you have to start questioning things uh, immediately. In my mind, I, I don't I don't believe anything anymore at all until I uh, until I get done researching and trying to find as much truth as I can and then put it together. Are you optimistic or pessimistic about life in America in the next twenty years? But well, right now, I am very pessimistic about it for the next year or two. Uh, 20 years out, I can't even imagine unless there's, you know, some magnificent change in the minds, uh, you know, of people, which I haven't seen so far. Gary, it's a pleasure to chat with you, my dear friend. Keep pumping out those uh, those pieces on lourockwell.com and on garybarnett.com. And we hope you'll come back and visit with us again. It's refreshing to hear you say this kind of stuff, which a lot of uh, libertarians believe, but sort of don't want to get other people's noses out of joint by saying it. One of the reasons you and I are friends is because I was drawn when we first met, not only to your intellect, but to your personal courage. So I, I, I thank you for continuing to manifest that. And I thank you for the time you spent on this program. Well, I, I truly appreciate it, Judge. And uh, 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 hopefully I'll talk to you again. Okay. All the best. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, coming up uh, later today at two o'clock, ask the judge, you and me, whatever you want to ask me, you know how to uh, get your questions uh, in here. Uh, after that, the Intelligence Roundtable. And after that, Max Blumenthal, Judge Napolitano for Judging Freedom.